जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी गोपी जान बाला धीरे पर गोपी जान बाला धीरी पर यशोदनंदन ब्रज जनरंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जनरंजन यामन चेरा वन चे मन तेरा जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 
राम राम हरे हरे Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nittai Gaur Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Nittai Gaur Hari Bo. Jai Jai Prabhupad, 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 Prabhupad. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Muti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pritarine Nirvisesha Sanyavadi Paschacha Desha Tarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskrityam. Naram Chaiva Narotamam Daivim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jayamudhirayat Nesta Prayeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke <coughs> Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki <coughs> So we, I'm going to begin today reading a verse from 10th Canto Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 1, text number 4. An important verse. Nivritta Tarshe Rupagi Yamanad Bavo Shadaj Chotra Mano Biramat Ka Utamash Loka Gunanu Vadat Pumam Virajeta Vina Pashuknat Nivrita Tarshe Rupagi Yamanad Bavo Sadaj Chotra Mano Biramad Ka Utamash Loka Gunanu Vadad Pumam Virajeta Vina Pashuknat 
nivrittata sherupagiyamanad bhavo shadachotrabmano biramat ka utamashlo kagunanuvadat humam birajeta vinapashukna Anybody else like to chin? Manages? No? Nevrita released from Tashai lust or material activities. Upagiyamanat, which is described or sung. Bhava Oshadat which is the right medicine for the material disease. Shotra, the process of oral reception. Mana, the subject matter of thought for the mind. Abhiramat, from the pleasing vibrations from such glorifications. Ka, who, Uttama Shloka, of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Guna Anuvadat, from describing such activities. Puman, a person. Virajyeta, can keep himself aloof. Vina, except Pashuknat, either a butcher or one who is killing his own personal existence. Translation, glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is performed in the Parampara system. That is, it is received from the spiritual master to disciple. Such glorification is relished by those no longer interested in the false temporary glorification of this cosmic manifestation. Descriptions of the Lord are the right medicine for the conditioned soul undergoing repeated birth and death. Therefore, who will cease hearing such glorification of the Lord except a butcher or one who is killing his own self. These words are spoken by Maharaj Parikshit, by the way. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. I won't read the whole purport. It's a long purport. I do encourage all the devotees, you can go through it in your leisure. In India, it is the practice among the general population, populace, to hear about Krishna, either from Bhagavad Gita or from Srimad Bhagavatam, 
in order to gain relief from the disease of repeated birth and death. Although India is now fallen, when there is a message that someone will speak about Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam, thousands of people still gather to hear. This verse indicates, however, that such recitation of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam must be done by persons completely freed from material desires, nivrita tarshai. Everyone within this material world, beginning from Brahma down to the insignificant ant, is full of material desires for sense enjoyment. And everyone is busy in sense gratification. But when thus engaged, one cannot fully understand the value of Krishna Kata, either in the form of Bhagavad Gita or in Srimad Bhagavatam. If we hear the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead from liberated persons, this hearing will certainly free us from the bondage of material activities. But hearing Srimad Bhagavatam spoken by a professional reciter cannot actually help us achieve liberation. Krishna Kata is very simple. In Bhagavad Gita, it is said that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As he himself explains, Mata Parataram Nanyat Kinchid Asti Dhananjaya. O Arjuna, there is no truth superior to me. Bhagavad Gita 7 7. Simply by understanding this fact that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one can become a liberated person. But especially in this age, because people are interested in hearing Bhagavad Gita from unscrupulous persons who depart from the simple presentation of Bhagavad Gita and distort it for their personal satisfaction, they fail to derive the real benefit. There are big scholars, politicians, philosophers, and scientists who speak on Bhagavad Gita in their own polluted way, and people in general hear from them, being uninterested in hearing the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead from a devotee. A devotee is one who has no other motive for reciting Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam than to serve the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has therefore advised us to hear the glories of the Lord from a realized person, Bhagavata Poradiya Bhagavata Stani. Unless one is personally a realized soul in the science of Krishna consciousness, a neophyte should not approach him to hear about the Lord, for this is strictly forbidden by Sanatana Goswami, who quotes from the Padma Purana, Avaishnava Mukognirnam Putam Harikatamritam Shravanam Naiva Kartavyam Satopista Yata Paya. One should avoid hearing from a person not situated in Vaishnava behavior. A Vaishnava is Nivrita Trishna, that is, he has no material purpose, for his own purpose is to preach. Krishna consciousness, so-called scholars, philosophers, and politicians exploit the importance of Bhagavad Gita by distorting its meaning for their own purposes. Therefore, this verse warns that Krishna Katha should be recited by a person who is Nivrita Trishna. Sukadeva Goswami epitomizes the proper reciter for Srimad Bhagavatam, and Parikshit Maharaj, who purposefully left his kingdom and family prior to meeting death, epitomizes the person fit to hear it. A qualified reciter of Srimad Bhagavatam gives the right medicine, Bhavo Shadi, for the conditioned soul. The Krishna consciousness movement is therefore trying 
to train qualified preachers to recite Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita throughout the entire world so that people in general in all parts of the world may take advantage of this movement and thus be relieved of the threefold miseries of material existence. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chatsurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagradatam Sahagana Raganatan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhanitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagadpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Adhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Vancha Kaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevata Patita Nam Pavani Vyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasa De Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So this is a very important verse Maharaj Parikshit is describing to us the power and the qualification necessary for hearing and for reciting literature like Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. Because Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita are particularly describing to us the glories of Lord Sri Krishna. And we want to understand Lord Sri Krishna properly. It's very important for us as devotees, therefore, that we hear through the proper channel. As described by Maharaj Parikshit, the proper channel is through the line of disciplic succession. We want to understand everything very carefully with the help of Sadhu, Shastra, and Guru. The three, three uh, authorities to guide us in understanding the absolute truth. If we simply take one, we may simply, I just simply read scripture. That's not enough. We have to understand the scriptures with the help of sadhu and guru. It's not enough to just simply hear from the guru and then neglect others. All three are there and they're all giving us the same conclusion. So sadhu, shastra and guru. They're meant to guide us in understanding the message of the personality of Godhead. As Prabhupada points out in his purport, at the present time in this Kali Yuga, there are many adulterations in presenting the message of Krishna. Many people will speak on topics of Krishna without proper references, without proper authoritative statements from the scriptures. We have to be very careful not to hear from such people. Even the chanting of the holy name, if we hear it from the non-devotees, then it will have a poisonous effect, just like milk touched by the lips of a serpent. Milk is a very delicious and very nutritious substance. We relish to take milk prasadam, but if that milk has been touched by the lips of the serpent, then it has a poisonous effect. And similarly, the glories of the holy name, you, if we hear the holy name from the wrong channel, 
And if we hear topics of Krishna from the wrong authorities, we will get in difficulties. So it's very important for us to hear these scriptures guided by the authorities. And that is, of course, why our Krishna consciousness movement gives so much importance to book distribution. We enjoy uh, distributing the literature of Srila Prabhupada, particularly books like Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita, to distribute full sets of these literatures is very pleasing to the devotees and pleasing to all the acharyas. Prior to uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, it was not very easy to obtain copies of some scriptures. Bhaktivinoda Thakur went to a lot of trouble to, lo to locate a copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita. It was very difficult to find out where is the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And he was living in Bengal and Arusa, but even there, they could not find so easily Chaitanya Charitamrita. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur then also discovered books like Upadesh Amrita, a very important book given to us by Srila Rupa Goswami. And uh, of, not only did he find these books, but he also wrote his commentaries on them to help us and to enrich our understanding of these books. So the point is, understanding topics of Krishna is a mystery. It's not easy. People often go off track. And that is why Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita says, Janma karmacha me divyam evam yoveti takvataha takvadeham punar janma Naiti Mamiti So Arjuna. We heard from uh, His Holiness Brahmananda Swami. There was this one devotee, a very early disciple of Srila Prabhupada, Brahmananda Prabhu. He became Brahmananda Swami for some time. So Brahmananda, he told us that he said he had heard the most important verse in the Bhagavad Gita was that verse from the fourth chapter. Just hearing, uh, rather understanding the birth and the activities of Lord Krishna to be transcendental. And he explained to us that this is the most important verse in the Bhagavad Gita because by understanding this, by understanding these points, by understanding the janma, and the karma of Krishna by understanding that they're all divyam, that they're not material, they're transcendental, then takva deham punarjanma naiti mamiti sorjuna. When we give up this body, we'll never take birth again in this world. That is to be desired. Therefore, very, very important verse in Bhagavad Gita. But we see today many people, they know of Krishna, but they know simply bad things about Krishna. They don't know any truth about Krishna. They've never been properly guided in understanding the topics of Krishna. And they think Krishna is just an ordinary person in the history. Oh, who is Krishna? Oh, he was a young man and he had many girlfriends. And there are many things which people will say about Krishna without proper references to Shastra. They don't actually understand Lord Krishna's real position in this world. The birth of Krishna, for example, is certainly mysterious. Now, if we ask people in Mathura, who the mother and father of Lord Krishna, they will say Vasudev and Devaki. But if you go to Braja and ask people in Vrindavan, who's the mother and father of Krishna, they will say Nanda and Yashoda. There's a conflict there. 
Some people are saying Vasudev and Devaki, and other people are saying Nanda and Yashoda. We have to understand what actually happened at the birth of Krishna. Is Lord Krishna, does he actually appear in, in the, this forearm, for, the forearm form as he appears in Mathura to Vasudev and Devaki? Is that the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Well, yes, of course, that is the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is the Vasudev form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, or you could say Narayan, the form of Narayan. But Lord Krishna himself, we know of Lord Krishna in a two-arm form, in the threefold bending form playing the flute. Why did he appear in a four-arm form to Vasudev and Devaki in the prison house of Kamsa? Well, of course, we understand that Lord Krishna appears in that four-arm form for the purpose of establishing or revealing his identity as the Supreme Lord to Vasudev and Devaki. Because Lord Krishna considered that if he simply came in his two-arm form as a child, then Vasudev and Devaki, they would not understand that this is actually the Lord who's personally coming as their child. In order to confirm to them that he is actually the Supreme Lord, he came therefore in his four-arm form holding the symbols of the, uh, the conch and the club and the lotus and the disc, the four symbols of Lord Vishnu. So he appeared in this way in the prison house of Kamsa, fully decorated with jewels and ornaments. And in this way, Vasudev and Devaki, they offered prayers to the Lord, understanding that the Lord was coming as their child they offered their prayers to him. And they also gave charity in their mind. They were in the prison. They couldn't physically do it, but within their mind, they, they gave charity to the Brahmanas. They gave 10,000 cows in charity. So Vasudev and Devaki, uh, they were reminded by the Lord at that time, he reminded them that he had already come as their child on two previous occasions. And the Lord told them, he reminded them, that first of all, when you were Prishni and Sutapa, I came as your child, Prishni Garba. And then in your next birth, you became Aditi and Kashyapa. At that time, I came as your child, as a, Vamana Dev, as Lord Vamana Dev. And now I'm coming again as your child. This is the third time. But uh, Prishni and Sutapa had undergone great austerities in the beginning in order to get the benediction of having the Lord as their child for three births. So the third birth is actually took place in the prison house of Kamsa. And you have Vasudev and Devaki then offering their prayers. And then they requested the Lord to change his form and to take another, to take a form like an ordinary child. Because they thought it will be very difficult for us to explain to people that you're our child when you have a forearm form fully decorated with jewels and ornaments, people will have great difficulty to accept that you are our child. So you please take the form of a baby. And in this way, the Lord transformed himself into a child. And then by the arrangement of yoga maya, Vasudev was able to carry the child out of the prison house of Kamsa and go across the Yamuna River. Although the Yamuna River was in full spate with the heavy rain which was falling at that time, Vasudev was guided. Somehow there was a she-jackal which led the way across 
and he followed in the footsteps and crossed the Yamuna and went to the home of Nanda Maharaj in Goku. Now, Nanda Maharaj's wife Yashoda had also delivered, and she delivered just at the same time Vasudev and Devaki's child had appeared. In other words, at the stroke of midnight. Now, Yashoda had delivered not simply one child, but actually there were two children delivered to Mother Yashoda. One was male and one was female. At this time, Vasudev had come there. Everyone was asleep, including Mother Yashoda. Mother Yashoda being tired from the labor of childbirth, she was asleep. And all the other people in the Gokula, they were also resting. Nobody knew. Vasudev came there carrying the child which had been delivered from Devaki. And he exchanged that male child for the female child which had been delivered by Mother Yashoda. As we said, Mother Yashoda had delivered two children, one male, one female. And Mother Yashoda, she is uh, actually, she's very special soul, very, very great soul. She has a the special position of always enjoying the childhood pastimes of Lord Krishna. Whenever Krishna comes as a child, Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj will be the parents. And they enjoy that Vatsalyaras with the Lord. Vasudev and Devaki, they could do austerities and they could get the Lord as their child. But they could not enjoy the childhood pastimes of Krishna. They could simply have the satisfaction of giving birth to the Lord, bringing the Lord into the world. But they never got to taste the pleasure of Krishna's childhood lila. That is only for Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj. So very special. Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj, they're even more, they're even more elevated than Vasudev and Devaki. Vasudev and Devaki, they offer prayers to the Lord. They offer their prayers to the Lord, but Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj, they're not offering prayers because they simply see the Lord as their child. So they don't offer, they're not offering prayers. It's a, a different mood. Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj, they don't have the same kind of awe and reverence which Vasudev and Devaki showed towards the Lord. So, Nanda uh, Vasudev took the female child who had been delivered by Mother Yashoda. And that male child which Vasudev brought over, that male child entered into the male child which had been delivered by Mother Yashoda. So the two male childs became one. Sometimes it's explained that one male child was Vasudev Krishna, and the other male child is Shyam Sundar Krishna. So Krishna has Ananta Rup. He has many different forms. He appears in many different places in many different forms. So this Shyam Sundar Krishna. That is the original form of Krishna, the original Swayam Bhagavan Krishna. But the Vasudev Krishna, who came from Mathura, that is 
the subordinate expansion of the Shamsundar Krishna. So Shamsundar Krishna and Vasudev Krishna, they become one. And the Giro, that is taken by Vasudev back to the prison house of Kamsa. Now, who is this girl who is born to Mother Yashoda? But that should be understood. This, this girl is described as being is by, described as being Yoga Maya. Yoga Maya also has an ex, Yoga Maya has many different forms, actually 16 different forms one of which is Subhadra. Subhadra is the name which we hear in Krishna Leela. Just like we see Jagannath Baladev Subhadra are here on the altar. So when we think of Subhadra, we think of Lord Krishna's sister, just as we see here on the altar with Jagannath and Balarama, and Subhadra. So Subhadra is sister. But there are different Subhadras. We hear also how Arjuna married Subhadra. She was one of Arjuna's four wives. So Subhadra is used in different places to describing different ladies. Just like one Subhadra is coming from Mathura. She was born in Mathura from the womb of Rohini, Vasudev and Rohini. Vasudev had several wives, the two prominent wives being Devaki and Rohini. So it was in Mathura where it was in Mathura where Devaki it was in Mathura where Devaki uh, rather where Rohini delivers Subhadra and later on she goes to live in Dwarka and it was there was at that time Arjuna became attracted to Subhadra with the arrangement, with the blessings of Lord Krishna, Deva, uh, Subhadra was uh, taken by Arjuna for his wife. So that's one Subhadra who becomes the wife of Arjuna. That Subhadra, she doesn't have any pastime in Braja. She never went to Braja. She was born in Mathura, and then she's living in Dwarka. And she married to Arjuna. From Dwarka, she married to Arjuna. But there's another Subhadra. Generally, we think that the child born to Mother Yashoda is Subhadra. Actually, it is. Uh, Yoga Maya, who is born as her child. And from that Yoga Maya form, the Yoga Maya form is a spiritual form. And her expansion as Maha Maya is then taken by Vasudev over to Mathura, to the prison house of Kamsa. Because Kamsa comes to the cell when he, hear, when he hears that Vasudev and Devaki have delivered their eighth child, then at that time, then at that time, then uh, Kamsa immediately comes and he wants to kill the child because the prophecy was that the eighth child born to Devaki is going to kill Kamsa. So Kamsa is waiting anxiously for this eighth child to appear. 
And when he hears that the eighth child has actually come, he immediately comes to the prison house and he takes the child from the arms of Devaki. But then the child, he tries to throw it to the ground, but the child rises up in the air and assumes the form of a deva, a demigoddess. Now that demigoddess has many different names by which she is worshipped by people because she's very powerful in the material energy. She is not yoga maya, but she is maha maya. So she's also known as Durga or as Vaishnavi. She's known as Bhadrakali. She's known as Narayani. There are many different names by which this goddess who appeared in the prison house of Kamsa is worshipped. When Kamsa tried to kill the child, the child rose up into the air and assumed the form of the goddess. And then from the goddess form, she then went off to the Vindhya hills, where she is worshipped today still, in the Vindhya hills. So we should understand that this child, this was not actually Subhadra. Subhadra is different. Subhadra is spiritual. She can be known as Bhadra, but not as Subhadra. Subhadra is a form in the spiritual sense. And Bhadra is in the material sense. So in this way, the child born from Mother Yashoda was exchanged by Vasudev, brought to Mathura, and then became the demigoddess. Lord Krishna, however, he became the one child. That the two, the, the child brought by Vasudev merged into the form delivered by Mother Yashoda the original Supreme Lord Krishna. He assumed he, he is there in Gokula as a child of Nanda and Yashoda. So the birth of Lord Krishna is very mysterious. And similarly also, the birth of Lord Balaram is equally mysterious because we know that Lord Balaram he was the seventh child originally in the womb of Devaki with Vasudev. He had appeared in the womb of Devaki as the seventh child, but then he had been transferred from the womb of Devaki with the help of with the help of Yoga Maya, he was transferred over to Gokula, where Rohini was staying. And in this way, Lord Balaram appeared as the child of Rohini. But initially, Balaram was the child of Devaki and Vasudev. So another bewildering pastime. So trying to understand the birth of Lord Krishna is not an easy thing. We see it is very intricate, very detailed. And without being guided by the acharyas, then we will never understand who is actually Lord Krishna and who is the, what is his birth? How did his birth come about? So we have to understand these things very carefully by studying books like Srimad Bhagavatam, that we can be guided but with the help of the acharyas, then they explain everything to us very clearly. Just as the birth of Lord Krishna is mysterious, so similarly also the disappearance of Lord Krishna is equally mysterious. People have great difficulty to understand how Lord Krishna can leave this world. And we often hear people say, we often hear people say that Lord Krishna was shot in the foot by a hunter. 
that Jara, the hunter, fired his arrow and it hit the foot of Lord Krishna. And this is how Lord Krishna died. So we hear this kind of reason people will explain like this. And then they will say, yes, and Krishna's ashes are there. And you can go there in Saurashtra, there in Gujarat, there's some place there. And they have the, the ashes of Lord Krishna. So people try to explain. People try to explain the, the disappearance of Lord Krishna in these ways, which is not actually how it happened. But they, they do not understand the inconceivable potency of Lord Krishna. They do not understand that Lord Krishna has this achintya shakti, that he appears just as his appearance is not ordinary. And similarly, when he leaves this world, it is also not ordinary. Just as we say about uh, 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 the pure devotee of the Lord, that if we think the pure devotee has a material body, but then we think he, he takes birth and dies like an ordinary person. Th this is wrong. Just like when we, if we look at the deity and we see the deity as being wood, then this is wrong. We have to understand it properly when we look at the deity that it's not simply a wooden statue. It's not just simply stone. But the deity is a transcendental entity who appears in the material elements. And similarly, the pure devotees of the Lord, when they appear in this world, it may appear like they have a material body, but we should understand their birth and their disappearance from this world are not ordinary. That they appear by the arrangement of Krishna and they leave this world by the arrangement of Krishna. And similarly, when we look at Lord Krishna, just as it is true that the pure devotees of the Lord do not have a material body, we should understand Lord Krishna also does not have a material body. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna himself says, Abhijananti mammudha manushim tanamashritam Param bhava majananto mama bhuta maheshwaram. That the foolish mock at me, descending amongst them like a human being. They do not know my transcendental nature and my supreme dominion over all that be. So people think of Krishna as being an ordinary person. They think his birth is like our birth, and they think when he leaves this world, it's like the, our death also. We have to understand Lord's birth is not material. And when he leaves this world also, it is not material. But Lord Krishna is very tricky. And he does bewilder the minds of the foolish people. Lord Krishna himself said, uh, I am never manifest to the foolish and the unintelligent. For them, I am covered by my eternal creative potency. So we should understand that the disappearance, when Lord Krishna left this world, it was not that he died. Krishna's body is not material. He has a spiritual body. Spiritual bodies don't die. It's an, but they appear and then they disappear. Just like the sun. Prabhupada gives a comparison to the appearance of the sun. Just as the sun rises in the morning and sets in the evening. So it's not that the sun dies. The sun may set. It's hidden from our vision. But the sun is still existing. In the same way, Lord Krishna appears in this world. He appears just as the sun rises and he performs pastimes. He performs his wonderful Leela with his devotees. He fulfills his mission. 
paritranaya sadunam vinas chaya chaduskritam dharma samstarpanartaya sambhavami yuge yuge. The Lord is coming millennium after millennium. In every age, he comes to give pleasure to his devotees, to annihilate the miscreants, and to reestablish the principles of religion. And when his mission is completed, then he leaves the world. He leaves this world. He does not die. He doesn't suffer old age, disease, or death. Lord Krishna was on this planet for more than a hundred years, but still he looked just like a young man. There was no question of gray hair or anything else like that. He was eternally youthful. And when he finished his pastimes, it came time for him to leave this world. But he did it in a very special, cunning way to bewilder the minds of the atheistic people. He left a material body. He did not leave his own divine body, but he arranged for another body to be there. He arranged it with all a magic show. Just like you have magicians who can per come and do wonderful magic tricks. Srila Prabhupada told about one magician he came to the royal palace and he, he, he did the, the, these incredible magical tricks. He arranged by his magical power that the different sons of the king all killed each other. They all died. And the, uh, there was so much fighting going on in the palace. Everybody was killing each other. And the, it was all going on magic. After a few days, the magician came, sent a me messenger back to the king's palace and said, kindly ask the king to give some contribution and reward in appreciation for the magic trick. All of the sons of the king and everyone are all alive and well. And it was simply, I simply arranged a magical performance for the pleasure of the king. So kindly ask him to give me some reward for my magic. Like this, Krishna also performs wonderful magic when he appears. He comes, he appears, and he appears like an ordinary little child. And he is enjoying his wonderful pastimes with his devotees. Sometimes also he's killing different demons. But that is his special reward on these demons that those who are killed by Lord Krishna, they are liberated. They all get to go to the spiritual world in one form of, or another. Some actually enter into his spiritual pastimes in the kingdom of God, and others enter into the Brahma Jyoti. But one way or another, they're all elevated to the highest position. Lord Krishna does these kind of tricks. And he does them, he performs the most wonderful magic himself. That when he left this world, he arranged to leave a body. Not his divine body, but an ordinary material body. A fake, a dummy, a duplicate of Krishna. But not, not a transcendental body an ordinary material body made up of material elements, which was like Krishna and appeared to be Krishna to the foolish people who could not understand. And in this way, Lord Krishna disappeared from this world. So we want to understand Krishna's mission in this world. It is not it's a small thing. It takes a lot of purification. We have to hear. As Maharaj Pariksit said, we have to be nevrita tarshai. 
we have to be free from material desires. Are we free of material desires? Of course we're not. We have so many material desires. We want to understand the topics of Krishna. It requires purification. And the purification process comes about by devotional service, by hearing the topics of Uttama Shloka, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Not the topics of any ordinary mundane person of this material world, but the topics of the Supreme Lord. And if we are killers of the, if we're animal killers, or if we're killing our own self, then we're unqualified. The word was used, Pashugna, the killer of the animal. Pashu is the animal, not only the killers of the animals, but those who kill their own self, then they are barred. They're not qualified to understand the topics of Krishna. If we are killers of the self, just like in Ishopanishad, we read about Atmahana, the killer of the soul. Now the soul is spiritual. The soul cannot be killed. But in the Upanishads, they speak about the killer of the soul. So how can we kill the soul? When we deny the existence of the soul, then that is the killing of the soul. When we disregard the actual interests of the self, then we're guilty of killing the soul. The soul needs to be given an opportunity to awaken its full consciousness. The nature of the soul is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. We say Satchit Ananda. But because we're in the bodily concept of life, our soul has become covered over by maya, by ignorance. So because the soul is covered over, our real spiritual nature is denied. And we simply dedicate our life to the pursuit of sense gratification, serving the senses, serving the demands of the tongue and all the other senses. We simply spend our time in this way. This is killing the soul. The more we engage in materialistic activities, the more the soul becomes covered. And the more the soul is covered, then we're more entangled in this material energy. We're guilty of this Pashukna, the killer of the soul, the killer of the self. So this is a very undesirable condition. We don't want to deny our own spiritual existence. And in order to help everyone to revive their spiritual existence, the Lord comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he teaches everyone the Sankirtan movement, the chanting of the holy names. So when we engage in this chanting of the holy names, then our consciousness can be revived. Whatever covering, whatever ignorance is there, it can all be removed through the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Therefore, the Sankirtan movement is so important in this Kali Yuga. Before people actually hear the glories of Krishna, First, they need to hear the holy name. They need to learn to chant. Srila Prabhupada used to tell us that chanting Hare Krishna is the beginning of our Krishna consciousness. Then we have to go on from there. Once we start to chant the holy name, then we want to cultivate our Krishna consciousness. 
we have to hear and we have to hear carefully the topics of Krishna. We have to hear, just like this Srimad Bhagavatam, there are 12 cantos. So we should hear it from the beginning. Just like when we look at the deity, we look first at the feet of the deity, then look up. So similarly, we study Srimad Bhagavatam from the beginning, from the Pada Padma, the lotus feet. The Pada Padma are the first two cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam. So we need to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam from the beginning. But in the Kali Yuga, people are so unscrupulous, they want to jump immediately to the 10th canto, and they want immediately to go to Rasa Lila without having any proper qualification. They're thinking they will understand Rasa Lila. Srimad Bhagavatam is set out in a very scientific, systematic, systematic manner. We have to understand Krishna's potencies, how he creates, how he arranges for this world, this creation. Then we can go on to understand more about Krishna's different incarnations, his different inconceivable forms. And only when we are purified our consciousness, then you might be worthy to understand Rasa Lila. Srila Prabhupada came to one family's house in Chennai in 1971. Prabhupada was staying with this one family in Chennai. And the man and his wife, they both came to Prabhupada and they said, Swamiji, we both want to hear Rasa Lila. And they requested Prabhupada again and again, we just want to hear Rasa Lila. You please speak Rasa Lila to us. Prabhupada ended up saying, you may be qualified to hear. I'm not qualified to speak. Prabhupada would not speak to them this Rasa Lila. He understood they were not actually really qualified to hear. But people, Kali Yuga, are so unscrupulous, they're such rascal. Immediately they want to hear. Rasa Lila. This is not the program. We have to hear from the beginning and we have to hear very carefully and understand properly the birth and the activities of Lord Krishna, how they are not of this world, how they are actually transcendental. All right. So we will stop here now and we'll ask if there's any question. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, you said that Devaki and uh, Vasudev, by dint of their austerities, they could get the Lord as their son, which they desired. So uh, is this part of the Leela in the material world that the eternal associates of the Lord are showing that they are doing austerities and then getting the Lord as the son? Or is it actually so that they did austerities and that is why now they are eternal associates of Krishna? Well, they did austerities. They had the desire to have the Lord as their child. They actually had that desire to get the Lord as their child, to give birth to the Lord. Now, afterwards, if you read Srimad Bhagavatam, then you come to 11th canto, Shrima, you can read how Vasudeva afterwards, he lamented that Lord Krishna had appeared. And Vasudeva, after Lord Krishna disappeared and left the world, then Vasudeva lamented that he never took advantage of the appearance of Lord Krishna. That what he should have endeavored for was to get out of the material world. But somehow or other, just due to maybe the plan of the Lord, Vasudev Devaki had the desire to have the Lord as their child. They just desired that the Lord would come as their child. And so the Lord did it. He fulfilled their desire. 
But, and of course, as I said, he took birth. Immediately after birth, he left. He didn't remain with them. Later on, later on, after Krishna has grown up a bit, then Vasudevan Deva, Kamsa is killed, and Vasudevan Devaki are freed from the prison house of Kamsa, and then they're reunited with Krishna again. But Krishna has grown up. It's not the same. You know, the, the childhood pastimes are more enjoyable. Generally, the mother and father will get more pleasure in the childhood rather than when, once the child grows up. Child grows up a bit, you know, they're not going to hold your hand anymore. You know, they become a bit, child, the children grows up, they become independent. They're not, you know, it's not quite the same rasa anymore with the children. But Vasudeva and Devaki, they just wanted the Lord as their child. Later on, they lamented, they regretted that it's, it wasn't important to get the Lord as their child. What they should have tried for was to get out, get liberation, get out from this material world. They should have thought more of that rather than just simply having the Lord as their child. Didn't uh, when the Lord appeared in the 400 form, when he was reminding them of their previous births as Prishini and Sutapa and so on, so didn't he promise that this, this is the third time and after this you will go back to the spiritual world? No. He didn't promise that. Maharaj, in the uh, Krishna book, uh, in this chapter, it is uh, when he, uh, when God starts reminding them that uh, earlier also had come twice, then he says that, uh, or uh, Prabhupada writes that uh, he told them that this is the third time and after this uh, you will go to, uh, you will not have to be reborn in the material world. I don't remember hearing this. You may, Prabhupada may have said that. But you see in the 11th canto, you have Vasudeva lamenting that he didn't take proper advantage that instead of just endeavoring to get the lord as a child what he should have been endeavoring is to get out from the material world yes Prabhu. Can you please help us understand you're mentioning that the deities are not material substances but transcendental form of the Lord. Could you please help us understand how to develop the vision of how to see the uh, reciprocation of the Lord so that we can develop that faith that it is not a material form. So if you could help us in that. Yes, very important. How can we understand the deity is not material? We say Atari Vishnu Shiladi Gurushu Naramati Vaishnave Jati Buddhi. Right? If we see the deity as being material elements, then Yashyava Narakisa, you're a resident in hell. So we don't want to be residents in hell. Rather, we want to appreciate the Lord in the deity form. And we want to develop that transcendental vision to actually see the Lord as, a, as, as the Lord himself, not just simply as a deity. You know, there's a story goes, the, the young boy was told by his father to offer to the deity they made the offering to the deity, and the deity ate the offering. And so the father got a bit discouraged. He said, what? The deity ate the offering? It's only a deity. He's not supposed to eat the offering. So rather we should feel great pleasure when the deity eats the offering. So the deity is another incarnation. The Lord comes in different forms, different avatars, 
And so Archa Murti, the, the form of the Lord and the deity, the Lord enters in the material elements as the deity. We have to worship the deity with love to understand deity, to understand that the deity is Krishna himself, not different. We have to have the mood of service. With the more we serve the deity and the offer service to the deity, then the more we will develop that transcendental vision to see Krishna, to see that the, there's no difference. Just as the holy name is not different from Lord Krishna, the deity is also not different from Lord Krishna. And we know there are many cases that we have Shira Kora Gopinath, the deity who stole the sweet rice. We have Shakti Gopal, the witness deity. We, we have these different deities who are performing these different pastimes, the, showing us that the deity is not ordinary, that it is not just simply some statue. But if you see the deity like that, then you will never see the real nature of the deity. Everything depends on the attitude of the performer. So if we have the right attitude in worshipping the deity, we will see the deity with transcendental vision. There has to be that transcendental vision. How to understand? Uh, we say, just like Premanjana, the one Prabhupada said, there's only one qualification to see God. And then he quoted the verse from the Brahma, Premanjana Charita. When our eyes are anointed with Prema, then we will see, then we will develop love for God. So similarly, we want to see the deity, we have to anoint our eyes with that love, with that prema, then we can actually understand Krishna, not just simply as a statue, but actually the Lord himself is there in the deity form, that he is so kind that he appears to us in this form of the deity just so that we can serve him. We see when Madhavendra Puri was there, at uh, that time Madhavendra Puri wanted to taste the sweet rice and the deity stole one of the pots of sweet rice. And that time the deity came in the dream of the pujari so the pujari who was worshipping the deity, he had the dream. Krishna appeared and, and he told him, he said, I've stolen a pot of the sweet rice. So the pujari was also the pure devotee because Krishna came in the dream and woke him up to tell him that I've stolen the sweet rice. And the pujari woke up, he immediately went and took bath again. He didn't, without, without hesitation, he, he got up because he'd been laying down. He took bath again and then went into the deity room to see the deity and he found the pot of sweet rice. So Krishna relates to the pure devotees. The deity is there, but only the pure devotees can see Krishna. The pure devotees, they talk to Krishna. Prabhupada would talk to Krishna. Prabhupada would sometimes tell the deity, I'm leaving you with these people. Please tolerate them. I'm, we will try to make everything better gradually in the future. I have to leave you with, the, with these malechas you please kindly tolerate and we will try to improve the situation for you.
So worshiping the deity is very, very special. We're very fortunate to have deities. We want to take advantage. You have to develop the prayerful mode. We have to speak to the deity. You want, you want to develop a relationship with the deities. We can try speaking with the deities. Every week we used to come before the deities and we would tell the deity what service I'm going to do, what are my plans, how I'm going to serve you. And we would give a report that the accounts for the temple would be read out to the deity every week. All of these kind of things are very important. Sometimes they're minimized, but it's all part of devotion. We don't just keep the deities here to offer food so that we can have prasadam. But we do want to develop the relationship with the deity. Uh, thank you for the uh, explanation. A little embarrassing question. If it's not out of the way, if you could probably tell us some of your personal experiences of developing so much faith in the Lord, the vision of experiencing the Lord as uh, the Supreme and how you develop so much of faith and the reciprocation, particularly how you have been able to appreciate the reciprocation from the Lord. Well, that's all, every, bit, every, own, every individual's own experience, reciprocation from the Lord, yes. When we t make more efforts to try to serve Krishna, Krishna does reciprocate. We want to have that eagerness, that desire, we want to make more sacrifices to give everything for the service of Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you for the wonderful class. Maharaj, uh, the question that I had, so in the class you mentioned Vasudev and Devaki, they had to deliver the child to uh, Nanda Maharaj. So they could not enjoy the childhood pastimes of uh, Krishna. And uh, you also mentioned that the mood was awe and reverence and with Yashodamai Nanda Maharaj, it is the mood of uh, Vatsela. So from a sadhaka perspective, Maharaj, what should be the mood when we worship the deity or when we deal with um, you know, the deities or in fact, for that matter, what should be the mood? What should be our mood in worshiping the deities? Well, we're not Raganuga Bhaktas, you know. Raganuga Bhakta, that's uh, very advanced and, you know. Rather, Prabhupada taught us we worship the deities in the mood of Lakshmi Narayan. So we do worship with proper respect and veneration. We want to be careful. Uh, Raganuga Bhakti, if we're more than on the, if we've come to that level of Raganuga Bhakti, then that's, uh, that's something which we don't bring so much into the deity worship. But in the deity worship, the mood is more Lakshmi Narayan. We keep the proper mood. Worshipping the deities on, with on veneration, offering prayers and so on. We don't want to, you know, people who are Raganuga Bhaktas, then they go to Vrindavan, they live in Vrindavan, you know, and they do their bhajan there. And you may internalize the mode of worship. 
and within your own mind you may be worshipping in the mood of a Raganuga Bhakti. But externally we should show the, the characteristics of a sadhaka, keeping up all the sadhana, all the rules and regulations and all the principles. The proper standards should be kept. Otherwise, it just simply creates doubts in the minds of ordinary devotees. So even though somebody may be doing Raganuga Bhakti, it should be internal. It's not something which they will make a show of. It's not that they do something different. Rather, they keep the same program as Prabhupada has established in the ISKCON society. All right, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Hare Krishna. Jai Shishi Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maiki Jai. So thank you so much, Maharaj. Very, uh, in very simple and clear layman language, you've explained a very complicated topic, Maharaj, today. So let us all thank Maharaj from the, and express our gratitude from the bottom of our heart, but loudly chanting once, Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Rama.